All right, welcome to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. So, I'm doing some reading, right? And, mm, what if someone told you that, what if someone told you that the, the, the name Reggae came from Chinese people? Chinese people named Jamaica music Reggae. They were there in the inception, the beginning of reggae. They were the producers behind the boards of reggae. They were the ones responsible for bringing reggae music to the world. You would be like, fuck no. The climate in Jamaica right now, as far as the invasion of the Chinese people, Chinaman take over everything, right? I've said in videos before that we could emulate or we could learn a lot from the Chinese people, especially the new wave of Chinese people that are coming in. This ain't the Brocco tea China them where we used to see in, in Jamaica where own the liquor shop because they came there or their forefathers came to Jamaica as indentured servants. These are Chinese people coming straight off the mainland of China. It's a two totally different set or groups of people. But they're still Chinese. And that is one thing that the broke out teeth poor Chinaman that's been in Jamaica for four or five generations can identify with right along with the Chinaman who just come out of China and don't know jack crap about Jamaica. So they have the power to claim a big part of our history you would say, hell no. Yeah, they do. Watch this. So here I am doing some reading. Let's start off, first of all, by saying a little story about Jamaica. So, during the British rule of Jamaica, African slaves were imported as laborers starting in the mid-1600s. Irish indentured workers were also used from the 17th to 18th century the majority transported by force as political prisoners of war from Ireland. So you wonder how a lot of us come up with names like Smith and uh, Mackenzie and MacFarlane and these Irish names. After slavery was abolished, the British imported indentured servants from India, China, and China to supplement the labor pool. As many freedmen resisted working on the plantation. Me now work for no blood club plantation no more dog. I'm free. Alright, we're bringing some indentured servants then. A few hundred Germans were also recruited. Eventually, Jewish and Lebanese immigrants seeking refuge from persecution also settled on the island. So, with this kind of history and this kind of mix-up right there, so... Uh, right now me confused are you how can any Jamaican actually call themselves African 100% you've been in a boiling melting pot with all this anyways almost all the Chinese who arrived in Jamaica prior to the 1980s were there from the Hakka ethnic group and came from a cluster of villages within 20 miles of each other in an area known as Shenzhen the 1943 census shows that the Chinese residing in Jamaica were divided into three categories. Catch that joke here. Yeah. You had the China born, that means you're born in a China. You had the local born, that means they were Chinese but they were born in Jamaica. Chinese of both Chinese parents but born in Jamaica. And then you had what they call Chinese coloreds. That referred to the multiracial people of mixed African and Chinese descent. After Jamaica gained independence from the British, the classification was abandoned, so they no longer tried to use those openly. And the group became locally known as Jamaican Chinese. In 1963, the Chinese had a monopoly on retail trade in Jamaica. They had a monopoly on retail trade in Jamaica. That was 1963, where in 2017, 
or we're in 2018, sorry, and they still do. Even a bigger monopoly now. Right? They were controlling 90% of dry goods stores and 95% of supermarkets along with extensive holdings in other sectors, wholesale, retail, such as laundries and betting parlors. Anti-Chinese violence and political unrest during the 60s and 70s led many islanders of Chinese descent to migrate to Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom. University education and career prospects were attractive incentives to leave Jamaica permanently. So, since they had already garnered all that because they already controlled the means to an income so then they're the wealthy already in Jamaica controlling 90% of dry goods stores and 70-90% to of wholesale retail supermarkets and so on they were always able to send their children to good schools and whatnot so when the whole of Jamaica started to lick out upon them now your dirty nasty blood clot China wherever wherever you had that boom Jump on a plane, fly out. Ended up in Canada, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. Right? And because they were already highly educated, or their children were, these foreign countries gave them the right to stay there. They were looking for engineers and so on, so on. But isn't it the same way today? Alright. Which leads me into something that's called unassuming entrepreneurs. So, when I started this video out, I was talking about Chinese people and the role they play in our resource, like reggae music. People would say reggae music is Jamaica's biggest export or exportable resource. Reggae music. Yeah, man. But to hear say, a Chinese man name it reggae, a lot of Jamaicans would say, hell fuck no. No, they didn't. To hear that Chinese people actually started it or ran it from the beginning till now, you would even be more like, oh, hell no. All right. Early Chinese record producers were mostly behind the scenes guys. They didn't want to be seen in the public eye. The technicians and the distributors, the record owners, those that worked the boards in the studio did all the complicated work. Even down to the band playing off the instruments and organizing or um, organizing the music. In their heyday, they were virtually unknown outside of Jamaica. However, the music from the Roots Rock era continues to spread throughout the world today. I'm going to give you some of them. Starting off with one. And this series on these videos, this video right here. It's going to be about three or four of these videos. Let's start off with Byron Lee. Because my mother used to play, play Byron Lee and the Dragoneers. That's how I know about that. Byron Lee is known to have introduced the electric bass guitar to Jamaica. In the late 1959 to 1960. Alright, so history has it now that Byron Lee is known to have introduced the bass guitar to Jamaica. So you ask that Jamaica never know nothing about bass guitar till the Chinese man introduced it to them. A lot of people are gonna even say wait, 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 Byron Lee was Chinese. Hmm, makes perfect sense now. Byron Lee. Chin Lee. Anyway, however, the reason Lee began to use the electric bass as opposed to the double bass had nothing to do with sound. Rather, it was a way for Lee to avoid carrying the large and heavy double bass to the truck and to move from gig to gig. The bass guitar soon gained popularity throughout the country and soon became the standard. Boom, 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 boom. Bass music and a reggae music. Reggae music is nothing without bass music. Or without bass. It's the bass line that drives the music. So the bass guitar soon gained popularity throughout the country and became the standard. The electric bass, louder, clearer, and even more in-your-face sound, soon changed the entire sound of Jamaica music entirely. 
I saw them have it, you know. And them say, a Byron Lee do it, you know. A Chinese man. Around 1950, along with his friend Carl, Brad, Carl Brady, he formed the first incarnation of his band, the Dragoneers. Named after the college football team that they played for. At that time, concentrating on mentor. I'll go down in our history now, you know. The band turned professional in 1956 and went on to become one of Jamaica's leading scout bands. Continuing since and taking in other genres such as Calypso, Soca, and Mass. Byron Lee helped build the career of dozens of vocalists from them time till now, including Jimmy Cliff, Toots and the Matos, and the Blues Busters. And he was instrumental in raising the profile of ska, from which reggae was born. Bumba Clot. Yo, that piece of history. Uh, so Flow TV audience, listen, talk up in the comment section and tell me what y'all think about this. Right? Because I know right now we have this kind of um, tumultuous relationship going on, whether it's on the surface or below the surface, with Chinese immigrants and black Jamaicans. And I say black Jamaicans because Jamaica full up of everybody. Right? So talk up in the comment section and tell me what you think about this, how you feel about this, and what you know about this. The Dragoneers appeared in 19 in the 62 James Bond movie, Doctor No, which was partly filmed in Jamaica. So them are the first for jumping all movie, overseas movie, Hollywood blockbusters. He later established Dynamic Sounds in 1969 when the best equipped recording facility in the Caribbean where excellent material was recorded by by the legendary Bob Marley. The Melodians, Junior Biles and countless other great Jamaican musicians. Byron Lee staged Jamaica concert with leading Calypsonians and soul stars during the 60s and 70s before swapping dance hall for soca in the mid 80s and was instrumental in bringing carnival celebrations to Jamaica. He died of bladder cancer in Kingston, Jamaica on November 4th of 2008 at the age of 73. So, with me hailing a true pioneer, Byron Lee, not even did I pay attention to the man a Chinese, so I can truly understand why some Jamaicans are like, no, I'm on a one lover, I'm not see no color and all this other stuff. But then going back to where the little girl get boxed by the Chinese woman, and me saying that this is a whole different genre of Chinese people that's coming in now, Compared to the Chinese that were there since back in a them time that I'm saying do they hold rights to our most prized possessions? And were they instrumental in the building of and the globalization of oh, you know say reggae gone global, you know. Dance and music, reggae music gone global. Were they instrumental in the building, creating, and the globalization of what we hold to be so near and dear to us? Talk up in the comment section, man. It's so flow TV and stay tuned for part two because I'm about to give you another one named Leslie Kong. Alright? Link up in our comment section. Say what you got to say. I'm out. Peace.